We'll call the meeting to order at 501. Do we have minutes somewhere from a week ago or two weeks ago? Sorry, just say we from one meeting to the next. Um, yes, you do. You have from the January 4th meeting. Yep. We'll take a motion on the minutes. So moved. I think I heard Keith second it, so we're good there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Keith. <laughs> All those. Oh, we need to take a roll call. Huh? All right, Phil. Yes. Keith, and I'm a yes. So yes. minutes are approved. Okay. I guess we'll just. Uh, I don't know if you want it there, or if you want to pass it right to Jelly, and away we go. Pass off. <laughs> you got the ball, Shelly, Run. I'm just working on sharing my screen. I, I emailed this to you, but I figure I'll share to make it easier for us to look at. It a little bigger. All right, so the first bit of information is just recap on where we were before. I'm not going to read through all these pieces, but we did start off at a 5.72% increase, um, and there were several new initiatives in there. Uh, so in working on the second draft, uh, those new initiatives were one of the things that we first talked about uh, reducing down. Um, we did eliminate the request for an additional building monitor, and we also eliminated the request for an additional faculty position. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean we're not getting the high school English teacher that is needed. It means that we have a vacancy in another role. So that position essentially, the new ask is eliminated and that vacant position from the current year will just get replaced with the English teacher if that's what George and just Sarah, Sarah determine is the best thing for us to move forward. So um, we did talk about the need for the English teacher and that very well will likely be the position that does get filled and we eliminate somewhere else where we're overstaffed. Um, so those were the first two pieces that we looked at from there, there's not a whole lot of other wiggle room. You know, they're, they're primarily things that we don't have a choice but funding. You know, the technology piece was not a new initiative again. Um, the nurse leader, we have to pay for. Uh, athletics, we just approved all these new programs. So, uh, you know, we can't even imagine having to go back and say, okay, now we're going to cut these for financial reasons. Um, you know, employee separation costs, the retirement assessment, all those pieces out of district placement, we don't have a lot of control over. So we have to start looking at other funding sources and how we bring down the budget with other funding sources. So uh, the first thing that I'm recommending is that we move 34500 to the Special Education Revolving Fund. Um, this isn't ideal. I didn't start here to begin with because we are overspending in that account. However, we have built up reserves. We have a few hundred thousand dollars in reserves. Um, so it's something that, you know, hopefully in the future, special education transportation costs will start to come down and we could slowly talk about moving some of that off. But for now, I think we can handle that um, next year. And then sort of the same scenario with school choice. Um, we have a $190,000 increase to out of district placements, and the recommendation is to move 100,000 of that onto school choice. Uh, school choice has been built up over the years. I think when I started here three years ago, it was hovering right around a million. Um, we started this year at 1.7. So um, I, the funds are there, even with doing this. And then you're going to hear about some other capital projects that we're recommending school choice be used for at the school committee meeting. Even with those pieces, uh, I think that we're still going to be in a healthy position. And again, with out of district placements, you know, these are costs that hopefully will go down over time and not continue to increase as students age out of the program. So um, eventually, hopefully, that'll come down and come off of school choice in general. So I know the big, big question is always the assessments. I'm sure you've all looked at them. Um, before we get into that, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of an explanation here. So we're looking at, obviously, FY23. Uh, the budget is at $12.2 Our Chapter 70 aid is slightly up 
we are in hold harmless state, which means that the state will not give us any less than the prior year. And the reason that we're in hold harmless is because our enrollment continues to decline. Um, with that, they give you a minimum of $30 per pupil. So that increase of about 15,000 in, in chapter 70 funding is due to $30 per pupil based on our foundation enrollment. The four town required contribution is going down, um, which means that the overage and the assessment just gets placed on the towns in a different spot. It's not required by the state, but it is what we are asking for as part of the budget. Uh, it going down is in relation to three out of the four towns seeing an enrollment decline in their um, town enrollment. Transportation reimbursement is up. Um, it's actually down. If you've read any of the governor's numbers, the governor is recommending cuts in transportation. Uh, we're hearing from our local state representative that the state reps are, are going to push for fully funding for regional transportation and hopefully bring up the governor's number. But if you look at that 153, we're down from last year. Uh, we had 183 in the budget and regional transportation actually ended up coming in, I think, around 240. So um, hopefully that number rises from 153, but we're being conservative here and going with the low. But it also includes, if you remember from last year, you voted to put 116,000 of excess regional transportation reimbursement into the stabilization fund. With that, you have to use it in the following budget cycle. So that's why we're coming up with such a significant increase in our transportation reimbursement. Even though the state number is going down, we have that money from prior years. So we're adding that back in. Uh, we're continuing with the E&D offset, which leaves the total assessment balance of 3.5, just over 3.5 there. Um, enrollment spread change there. We dropped off 2017, added in 2022 numbers. And then Conway uh, assessment works out to a 2.57% increase, Deerfield 0.9, Sunderland 5.3, and Waitley's taking the big hit this year at 14.28. Um, part of the reason why Waitley's taking the hit is because of the four towns, Waitley's enrollment is up. We all know that the Chapter 70 formula is not that simple. There's a lot of other factors involved, um, and I don't have to tell you veterans what that looks like, but they must have some increase in income and other factors in that formula as well. Um, but where the other towns are seeing the local assessment go down, Waitley seeing it go up because that enrollment number is higher for the town of Waitley at Frontier next year. Um, so their assessment is getting hit pretty substantially at 14.28, which I know we did this with Sunderland last year. I think we did it with Conway two years ago or maybe three years ago now um, where we're seeing this significant fluctuation. So I don't have a much more of an explanation around it other than a lot of it is chapter 70 driven um, or state contribution requirement. That's up about 70,000 in Waitley. So, you know, those numbers aren't great. You know, Darius and I and George and I talked about, like, what else could we do to, to reduce? You know, do we want to come in under 3%, um, drop off another 100000 from the budget? But once you look at these assessment numbers, I think we have to talk about whether or not that sacrifice, because I am going to call it a sacrifice, because we will have to look at likely reducing in some areas where we don't want to, such as personnel, because we don't have that much slush in our budget. Um, I could certainly shave off certain accounts and come up with some money, but I think we're talking about the possibility of um, eliminating at, at a minimum 50,000 in wages, which I don't think is ideal. So then when you look at the breakdown and the change of the assessments, it looks really good for Deerfield, but it really doesn't help Waitley that much, you know, at least from my opinion and perspective, not knowing the town's budget, because strictly seeing, you know, an $11,000 reduction and, and one percentage point, it's not a ton of money. So is it worth the district to lose that $100,000 in services for such a small change? My other fear with this is that it drives Deerfield even lower. And then if Deerfield's the one to see the increase next year, you know, we're sort of just like faking the numbers a little bit by doing things like that. Um, 
So that's where we're at. And I just wanted to give you the school choice number here too, because we are talking about using 100,000 of that, um, but still at 1.3 projected for the end of next year, it's still in a really healthy choice for, for um, a really healthy spot for school choice. So I suppose we could look at loading more onto choice to help offset, but again, we're falsifying the budget. You guys hear this at your elementary school committee, some of you do, that we don't wanna over stretch those funds. So I'm gonna stop talking and let someone else <laughs> give feedback or an opinion. You know, Let me know where you want me to go in this document. I can turn it off, I can move to a different spot, I can repeat something, just let me know what you need. I think your comments are right on point about you know, the prospect of eliminating another 100000 because I went up and down that thing about five times this afternoon, and it, there's a peanut here and a peanut there. There's, there's, there isn't any, anything else to get to where, from where we started a month ago to where we are now, I think is terrific. But I wouldn't, um, you know, I'm the, I'm the one with the big assessment increase this year, and I don't, that, that's, that's fine with me. It's a cyclical thing happened to Phil, it's happened to me, and happened to Keith. Uh, it's, you know, it's a function of the numbers. And I think anybody who's been on a select board or a finance committee for more than five minutes understands how fickle this formula is. And that's just, that's just the way it is. And, and your student, and Bill, your student population goes up by what, 10%, more than, more than 10%, right? So yeah, it went up quite a bit. So, I mean, that kind of, that, that that at least that's a rat you know you, you can explain that yeah i mean that's the, that's it in the nutshell really when it go you're right it's went up by seven from 48 to 55 so uh, that's there it is. It, yeah so that's um, you know the, 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 there was a lot there was a lot in there sally i, I you know i i First of all, just you know, the, the sort of going last to first, that I, I had thought that we were in the hold harmless thing for the chapter seventy, but when I saw that when the governor's um, first pr uh, proposed budget came out this week, in that his cherry for frontier it had us losing, it has it had us losing across the board and everything from last year. Yeah, the chapter 70 um, went up $30 a pupil. That's all that that went up. But yeah, the other areas, I think our choice numbers are looking to be down. Charter going out, I think, is going up. <laughs> but that might, you know, that's a harmful for us too. So you're right. Um, and, you know, the, the, the part that, ha you know, the part that has me like ner pretty, I don't know what you want to say, but the, the, the the way that you discussed the English teacher and, and everything that that the whole thing to me that just sounded vaguely cannibalizing. I I, mean, I don't I, you know. So what 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 is the you know? Here's where you get to assuage my guilt. So I you know what 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 really um, you know because at 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 the end and and then at the end you you, you talked about losing you know. Fifty thousand dollars in weight. We needing to cut fifty thousand in wages if this is the budget. So, and that doesn't sound too appetizing either. So, um, unless of course those positions aren't actually needed. Um, no, I, but, I'll let George talk to the change in the in the teaching positions. Um, my understanding of it is that we had a um, math teacher resign recently, and we filled with a long term sub. And when they look ahead to next year there's the possibility of eliminating that math teaching position because of class sizes and moving that English teacher need into there. But obviously George can speak better to that. And that's exactly, and that's exactly what it is, Shelley. So basically as the numbers are starting to decrease in the, in the elementary schools, sixth grade coming into seventh grade, we're going to be moving, the sections are decreasing. So the need for as many teachers in the middle school um, will also decrease. So we can, the, basically the way that we can, that we can shift the need is we can take, we can we can share in a sense, right? We can share a middle school math teacher uh, with the high school, with them primarily landing and teaching courses primarily in the high school, and then one, uh, most likely one middle school class, um, and that way we won't have to replace the the, the full time high school te math teacher that just resigned, um, and then we'd be able to we'd be able to 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 um, to swap 
the English, the full-time English teacher position with that, which is, which would be incredibly helpful, as I said before, because we've had three English teachers um, to four for all of the other content areas at the high school. So that would actually, that would expand a lot of things, would help a lot of things for us, um, and we'd be able to do it. Okay. Well, that, so that sounds, that sounds not so bad. There's your um, guilt assuage now, Phil. You feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what about the other 50,000 in South? Because in your presentation, I didn't really hear the $50,000. Well, What's that? That's only if we take the other 100,000 out. Right. If we don't go for another 100,000, the 50 is not a factor. Okay. I mean, uh, What else was there? Um, Basically, what I was saying, Phil, is that if this committee wanted to reduce the budget further, say by a hundred thousand, I'm I'm saying at least fifty thousand of that would have to be in personnel changes because we don't have a hundred thousand elsewhere. But at the same time, it really doesn't make sense financially looking at the assessments to even make that move to reduce another hundred thousand. It's not enough. I mean, we'd have to really go dramatic in order for it to have an impact in the assessments. Well, there's there, there's no way. I mean, Waitlist is the smallest contributor. There's no way we're going to save them without cutting half a million dollars out of the budget. Right. So the, the figures just don't work in, our, in Waitlist's favor this year, and that's that's the way it goes, I guess, is that all you can say. So the, the, other, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about was um, the, the decision to apply whatever money was being applied to the transportation number. Um, was it, was it because if, if that amount that was applied to that, to lower that transportation number could have been applied elsewhere. I mean, to, 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 to me, it that can't. transportation, it can't. Okay. No, it's okay. the law that it, you can reserve it for one year. You have to use it in the next fiscal year to reduce your transportation costs. Right. And there's a little bit of swapping things around because right now the house is probably going to come out with a stronger transportation line than the governor did, but we're not going to know that until budget season's over. You know what I mean? So if we do get excess in that fund, we will again put it into this revolving account and we're going to start playing this game like we've been doing with a little bit we've been doing with E&D, where it's kind of a fake budget until it doesn't get funded and replenished, you know? The only thing, Phil, other that we could have done with the money is if we didn't move it into the transportation, it would have went towards our free cash. So one, it could have put us over 5% last year when we were certifying, or it just brings up that number. And we're only using 200000 to offset this. So we're better off doing it the way that we did it this year. And as Darius just said, we're going to have more this year than what we budgeted for. So we'll throw it in and you know, it, it's a little bit of falsifying the numbers like we're already doing, but it's a system that we can continue to do moving forward as long as transportation doesn't decline too much from the state level. So, I mean, I guess the real question is, is looking at that three, that three, five, nine, that's a heavy number. Right? You know what somebody- Not 2.5, which was requested. <laughs> you know what 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 my neighbor what my neighbor on social security just reminded me today is that social security went is going up this year what 5.8 6.8% the amount that senior that that retirees get from that are dependent on social security is it's the biggest one year increase in many years so it's also significantly uh, lower than what we're seeing from general inflation as well yeah so i mean that this is the year when everybody's used to everything going up and um to, to me that to, i mean to me that's a, that, that that's that's a palatable number i mean uh, if you take know. away take out the ba the the uncontrollables out of right. replacement frank county assessment the retirement assessment things of that right. nature that are, you can't take them out you have to leave them in there what's left really 
The only new piece that's really still controllable is that we had asked for one additional IA to be added. We have kept that in. There are several students coming in from sixth grade that may need or already have one-to-one -one, um, IAs. So, you know, we're going to be in a position where if we don't ask for it now, <laughs> we're probably going to be trying to figure out a way to pay for it later. So, um, and it's, you know, we're talking $23,000, $25,000. Um, it's not going to have a big budget impact to pull it off. Uh, I just got a couple questions. I got. I think I'm going to need help, like explaining what I think. I have some ideas. But so, would, is it fair to say that by and large, this budget is providing a level service? I mean, we're we're adding some new athletics and the the nurse leader position, but by and large, we're we're providing. There's no large new initiatives in this budget. Or would that be fair to say? That is fair to say as far as staffing and programming, yes. All right. And because this one has come up to me before. So with a, a significant, and I just got to figure out, I, I, I have ideas of where this is going, but with a, a significant drop in students, that is a contraction. Why is the budget continuing to go up? That's what I have to try to explain. That was a really great question. <laughs> you know, you there's really so many things. <laughs> Bill, what did you say? You have a really great answer. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you just said it. There's so many things out of our control here. You know, we've got an increase of 20000 for employee separation costs. So our sick buybacks, teachers retiring, that's eighteen five and change, I think, was, was the exact number. 20000 increase to Franklin Regional Retirement Assessment. $90,000 increase in out-of-district placements. I mean, we can't control those pieces. Um, and none of those pieces are a factor or a, or a result of enrollment. They have, you know, that really. So. Yep. That's exactly right. So the nurse leader, that's not a new initiative. We knew three years ago when we got the grant that we were eventually going to have to put that on budget. And we put pieces of it on this year in the current budget and next year it, it all comes on. So, you know, those are all pieces we can't avoid. Um, what do I have in here for technology? Okay, so 25000 in technology related expenses for software and network expenses. I could probably finagle that. We could pull that off. We'll, you know, borrow some from the electric line or from the heat line and, and cover those things. Um, so if you guys wanted to go that route, we definitely could. Uh, it, it's again, not new initiatives, it's, it's existing software and network related technology that over the years we've added and not corrected the account. So if we go and look at those account lines, you're gonna see them overdrawn year after year after year. So I'm looking to right side them and and fully fund them where they should be funded. Um, the majority of it, Keith, are, are things that are out of our control. I, I also Please. think when you look at the population, um, the population declines, we still are hovering around 100 per class with one, you know, with one blip. The big kind of drop off we had was last year, we had 126 in eighth grade. And that came down almost all the way down to 100 and, it's 103 right now, 104 right now. So the eighth grade tech took a ton of kids. Tech's taking more kids. This is where the politics of the technical school and that kind of stuff, they don't have to change their budget when they have a decrease in When we have a decrease in they keep on taking the same number of kids. So between that, private schools and whatever other options that kids are doing. So we're still around 100 per class outside of that balloon class was in eighth grade. We're making a reduction in the middle school to counter that balloon class going out. Um, but still, your your number of sections of courses isn't enough where all of a sudden, like, oh, we don't need a ninth grade English teacher. You mean like you're, you know, maybe your sections are now, you know, there were 20 instead of 22, but they're not dropping enough where we can start cutting staff across the board, you know. Um, and then, then you have a, a philosophical one, or, okay, do we – if we really want to cut, do we start looking at electives and programming and that stuff that draws a lot of our um, kids to stay and draw a school choice? And so do you start playing that game? Like, you know, you look at the arts, do you look at some of the other things that engage students and that kind of stuff? And we never want to start there, but when you talk about numbers of people, we don't have the numbers low enough to start cutting core class sections. Um, that may change next year as we have another small class coming in 
and we may have to be looking at, you know, there may be, again, a core shift in the middle school. It's something that George and Sarah have been talking about, like, you know, look, trying to prepare ahead. Um, Cause you know, we used to have three teams in the middle school. Now we're we had kind of like a morphed two and a half team kind of deal where we did a lot of sharing with the high school in the last few years. It may be strictly a two team high school or a two grade high school um, next year, but then we'll have to see what that looks like. And, you know, you know, numbers may change as people come back to public schools. Been, our homeschool numbers are higher than <coughs> have stayed high. A lot of people have stayed out. Um, so those people could come back and you also could, you know, you know, the big choice kind of thing could be happening as well. But, you know, we have to judge that to make sure that we don't over accept as well. But so those are, but it's a good question, Keith, because maybe you kind of dive into the numbers as well. Um, that, you know, I've, I've gotten that. And it, when you, when you dive into numbers, it's, it's a little bit more nuanced, but it's really easy sound bite that it's hard to, to argue against. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The real honest answer is, Hey, you would, you should see what it'd be look, what it would look like if, if, if we had more kids there, <laughs> uh, yeah. but, um, yeah, the, you know, with, with, with a student loss of that magnitude though, that you charters probably had to have sucked in a bunch of them too. So I, I, I always take that, that specific or question like that. That's a good opportunity to beat up on charter school financing and the need for legislative reform, which there is momentum. There's more momentum this year for that than there has been in the past. So just financing reform. That's all. But uh, in the big picture, I'm I'm comfortable with the 3.5. I think it's it, it puts the students in the best position. I think if like Mike, when you started talking about technology, uh, Charlie, I was like, is is does that benefit students? Is that going to put them in a better position? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it would be no. So I, that's not. I don't know if I can support that. Yeah, and some of it's with supporting our teachers as well, right? So the platforms that they use. Um, for curriculum management or grading and you know communication with our community you know we've made improvements there as well with those platforms too so you know it's it's not ideal um, I, I mean the one thing that's interesting talking about platforms and stuff and just kind of you know i know keith you're probably seeing this obviously as a teacher as well but the fact that we were forced to go remote did bring everybody on board to the new way of organizing through technology classes and such you know what i mean like like I yelled at my son this morning for like, like your backpack was in the truck. How did you do your homework? He's like, Dad, it's all on the platform. I got to go on this. I got to go on this. And yeah. the different, you know, different software, different platform what they're doing. And I'll say the positive COVID, it pushed everybody to look at those new kind of ways of approaching things where they bring their all their work with them. They can never forget it, so to speak. But I just, it's a real live thing that happened this morning. I was like, you need to do your homework. Some bags in the truck. Remember, we used to do Right, Bill, Barry, you guys just remember that. You, how'd you yeah. do it? A bag full of books. What happened to that? Nope, okay. no more. Now they have this other thing. What? I can't use it as a barometer. I have to actually look over your shoulder. <sighs> yeah. the, the, the days of getting your test and, and holding it in front of your dog and trying to get your dog to bite the test so that you wouldn't have to do it so you could hand it in all torn up, those are gone. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, Keith, to further support you or any of you in talking with the select board or, or town members about this, I'm happy to give you some more data. I had provided it in the initial draft, um, but it was based on the higher number and it talked about what percentage of the budget is salaries and wages versus non-salaries and wages. I think that those are always good talking points. Um, what percentage of the increase is to salaries and wages, which you know, we're talking about one $25,000 new position. The rest of it is contractual and COLA adjustments for existing staff. That's such a significant, it's like 50% of our increase practically. Um, so the other thing that I think is good to pay attention to is our historical data regarding our increases. And going back to 2019, we've been hovering around that 3.5, 3.6 range with the exception of the one year that we did a zero increase. Um, so it feels like we're in alignment. You know, we're not asking for significantly more than we have in the past four years. So, you know, those are good things for us to keep in mind as we're talking about um, things. And, you know, we knew there was going to be some recovery. We went in 0% with every school. <laughs> we're on, on the third year away from that now. And at some point, there are going to be things that have to start to come back to budget because we didn't cut anything then. 
We just moved money around and paid it with other funding sources. So there's going to be a natural increase to some of our budgets because of that in the future. So the, the other thing, you know, Darius, when you're talking about need for potential cuts in, in the future, I mean, it's, it's hard to square that with adding two new sports. I mean, for me, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I did take a look at a past thing and I saw that, because we added volley, we added boys volleyball, and I did. I, of all of our sports, the the girls volleyball is the only one that habitually goes over budget because they win everything and they it's all those extra bus rides. Um, um, so I mean that's great, but uh, gosh, if that if, we, if that boy if that girl if the new boys volleyball team ends up like that, no, I mean, we, we, so but you also we, look at you also look at you know that's what this that's because. That goes right back to the school committee. So a school committee, you represent your communities in what they, you know, you know, the different values they have, you know. And so the, the high amount of participation that Frontier has in athletics, you know, some people go, oh, it's a sports school, blah, blah, blah. Well, we can, you can beat up on it that way. You also can say that our, we have, you know, close to 70% of our kids doing a fall sport. They're active. They're, they're engaged, that kind of stuff. Kids involved with sports have higher grades than kids that don't. I mean, those kind of things, like those kind of, Things that we bring value to, so school committee saw an opportunity to expand participation, in, especially looking at like winter track. When I was out there, they were out in the parking lot today. Those kids would be doing what now? Going home, sitting in front of the TV set. Instead, they're actively engaged. It's going to help the mind, the soul, the whole other stuff. So we look at those different values, and you can say, you know what? Should we be spending the money there? That's that's really a value question. You guys can come back together and say, you know what? That's where we need to cut. We shouldn't be expanding those in this time, and. You know, that's what, you know, to decide what the community needs. But that's kind of, you know what I mean? Like we, I I think, you know, Carl has to keep on saying, kids want to do this. You know, we're in the role of saying no. Or we say, you know what, let's do it. You know, that kind of thing. So um, that's kind of the pushback on that because you're right. We could say, you know, why we should cut there first, right? Because those are all new things. Nobody's going to miss them, right? But at the same time, where your values, and that's what budget is all about, is values, right? And what do we value? Well, it's, it's, it's because when, when they come before a school committee and you see the enthusiasm and the community-wide interest and, and, and everything else that you said, it's easy to say yes. The, 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 at, at the time you're making that decision, you're not aware that there is a potential trade-off and that if, if that decision at that time was phrased, okay, it could be this or your art, you know, XYZ arts or elective thing, then... I wonder what the decision would be, or you know, be, because. Um, so I mean, hindsight, hindsight, twenty twenty, but. Correct, and know. if we were to take if we were to take the next step, and let's say the committee now said, "Dears, you know what? The accounts can't afford this year. We want we want two percent. Let's do something crazy." And so you say, "Okay, go ahead and cut two hundred thousand dollars." Well, then, right, that's where we're going to be. Where it was in my first year as principal, we start talking about what are the values of what we're cutting. You know, versus, you know, the administration is going to come up with the suggestions. And I tell you what, if we had to go 2%, we would be cutting the sports. And it would be also be cutting other kind of electives. And then you'd be, right? You, then you would have to come down to value judgments of where are we going to prioritize our things. So I hear you, Phil. I know, right? I mean, it's, you know, perhaps those sports things in hindsight, we've never added before like that. Um, we probably should have waited for the middle of budget season, maybe, um, instead of doing it in the fall. But at the same time, to add the sports you had it it's running now right we couldn't you know um so i hear you but at the same time it's just again want to i sense that we're not going to break the budget on those those additions it would have been interesting to have the uh, budget before we which can't happen but to look at the budget while you're making those decisions but i also get the sense that those aren't you're not going to cut a hundred thousand dollars out of the budget by not having boys volleyball no. I mean, those, the things do, they do add up, you know, but so I agree with that. Um, but I don't, you know, I, I don't really believe we're in a bad place with the exception of my town, but that's my problem. I don't think we're in a bad place at 3.5. And if there's a revolt among the four towns, then we have to come back. But if we do everything we can now before the revolt and the revolt still comes, then what do you do? So I think I think we're okay. I really do. I, given the fact that I've done this forty five times, I three three point five 
is is not such a terrible number, especially with all deference to my friend, Mrs. Raymond. As long as the mother town is not the one with the 14% increase, we in pretty good shape. Yeah. 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 In projecting ahead, it's hard to project the funding, but Deerfield's going to have a very good year next year because you have a singleton class coming up, or rather two instead of the three sections. And so you're going to have a huge drop in the whatever. And it looks like Sunderland's going to get hit next year when I look at population alone. Just FYI. There you go, Keith. <laughs> don't, don't say that while I'm drinking here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I was trying to project ahead because I was like, you know, could we could we have saw some of these patterns? Um, it's tough when when you know the patterns five kids, you know what I mean, and some of the smaller schools and their percentage. I mean, that's tough, but um, yeah. And then Deerfield will go way back up again, because then they'll become right back up the year after that. So there's going to be these fluctuations. I don't know. <laughs> I, the only advice I can say is if you got a refund, save it because the following year it seems like people are getting hit. Because you know, Wheatley had a, a you know minus sixty thousand last year, so yeah. you know um, it seems to be like if there's a, some kind of ab, you know, you know, I don't know the rhyme or reason of it and why it's happening that way, but it seems every following a year of savings, people are getting hit. If um. If everybody is, if we're of like mind on this thing and everybody's okay with the three five, I will entertain a motion to bring the three five nine budget forward to the entire committee. I'll make that motion. Second. <laughs> motion in a second. A roll call, Phil. Yep. Yes. yes. Keith. Yes. Mary. Yes. And I'm okay. So we're good. We'll bring that forward to the next meeting and. Uh, Run it up the flagpole and see if we can get everybody to salute. Thank you. Thanks. That's great. Thank you. See you in 20 minutes, Keith. Yeah. Any other uh, business? Motion to adjourn? Yeah. Still moved. And second. Raise your hand if you'd like to adjourn. There we go. One, two, three, four. You got it. Thank you all. Yeah.